Hey hey guys, Steven here and welcome back to another Android TV Box review and today we're going to have a look at the ProBox 2 EX Plus. As you may know, I did a review on the ProBox 2 EX, but basically the EX Plus comes with a different chipset and also it can run Android 5.1 Lollipop. So I'm really excited to bring you this review today. As always, there's a link down below in the description, so make sure you check it out for the cheapest price on the ProBox 2EX Plus. Then now let's go and let's have a closer look at the specs of this little baby. Right, right, and here are the specs of the TV box. So it runs the M-Logic S812 quad-core chipset, and the CPU in quad-core clocks up to 2 GHz, and also um, includes the octa-core Mali 450 GPU with a clock up to 600 MHz. It now has an integrated H.265 decoder for 4K and this will give us a great movie experience. 2GB of DDR3 memory, 16GB of eMMC storage, as always we have dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. So it says here Android KitKat, but um, yeah, it doesn't Lollipop run for that and um, all new versions will now ship with Lollipop, so um, don't be um, somehow confused. Now HDMI 1.4b up to 4K at 30fps, so there is no HDMI 2.0 and well, my monitor can do um, only 30Hz anyway so I don't really care. It comes with a 10 watts power supply adapter and several ports and you can find all the dimensions, weight and everything here on the package or down below in the description. Okay then now let's go and let me show you what you can find inside of the box. So here's what you can find inside of the box and first of all let's get started with the TV box itself. It's the ProBox 2EX Plus, it looks actually the same like the old ProBox but yeah here you can see the Wi-Fi antenna which is also detachable and we'll have a closer look at the device just in a second but first of all I want to cover the accessories. It comes with a basic remote control. Pretty okay to turn the TV box on or off with the button here, here the IR LED, here we have the battery case, um, it needs two AAA batteries and well um, the remote control is made out of plastic, um, feels kind of cheap but looks at least nice and um, it has a mouse button but then you need to use the D-pad here to control the mouse cursor and it's just a pain in the ass to um, actually control the TV box with that. This is why um, the remote Remote Plus is a very good alternative. I'm not really sure if it's included in all packages, so you have to check that before you buy the box. But I have to say, um, if you can get this extra for a couple of bucks, get it. It's so worth it. It's a universal remote, that means it also works on other TV boxes or your computer. Then it's a gyroscope mouse, and actually called Air Mouse, and it's not connected with an IR blaster to the TV box, or actually with the IR LED, if I can say it like that. But um, we have here a receiver which you plug in to a USB port of the TV box and then the remote is working. Then um, it also has here a battery case for two AAA batteries and an IR LED here at the top. But it has many functions. So you can use it as a normal remote, as a gamepad. Um, you have here the D-pad, here the buttons. You can switch into mouse mode and then um, a cursor appears on the screen and you can control the cursor here like this. So just like a Wii mode. And this works really, really good with the built-in gyroscope. It comes with a built-in microphone which you can do to which you can use to record anything. You can um, go back here to the home screen, so it's a very cool thing. You can also um, set the box to standby or power it down, uh, power it off, sorry, um, but you can't really power it back on. So um, for that, um, the normal remote control is actually better. All right, guys, um, then here we have a micro USB cable, which is included. So this is basically to connect the TV box to your computer if you want to update the software, which is possible because it comes with a micro USB OTG port. We have here the AV adapter cable, so um, it's basically a 3.5mm connected to um, those cinch cables. Um, then here we have HDMI, so this is a 1m HDMI cable with gold plated connectors as we can see, so looks like pretty decent quality and I'll also use that to connect it to my monitor. We have a ProBox 2 EX Plus user manual and um, here you can see basically yeah, how to use it, how to connect it and it's in English only so it's not multi-language but well, um, the setup is very easy and I can show you that too. Okay, then here we have the power adapter. It's a 10 watts adapter, so the output is 5 volts, 2 amps, and it comes here with a normal normal DC in connector and with the correct power socket connector for your country. So you don't have to use an adapter and that's basically it. So this is everything you can find inside of the package. And now I would say let's have a closer look at the box itself. 
Alright, now here's the ProBox 2EX Plus and well, the body is actually the same if I remember that from the ProBox 2EX. Unfortunately, I don't have it here anymore, otherwise we could compare it. Then here we have the power button at the top, so a hardware power button. This is something I really like because I already have some TV boxes without any hardware power button, which really sucks. Okay, now yeah, um, the top here feels really good, so this is like a little bit like rubber, so it feels really cool at the top, but it's not rubber, it's just some some really nice plastic. Now here the frame, it's very glossy, something I do not like so much because um, you see all the fingerprints, dirt on that. Um, here on the left side we have the connector for um, the Wi-Fi antenna which is detachable and basically you could also change the Wi-Fi antenna but the one included um, seems to be very strong and is also very big. Okay, then let's have a look here at um, the side here with all the connectors. Like here we have a micro SD card port to extend the internal memory. Then here a micro USB OTG port. Basically this is to connect to the computer, USB debugging on and to flash it or whatever. Um, here we have one of the two USB ports because, um, actually three USB ports because you could use um, the OTG port too with an adapter. But they are just regular sized SIM um, USB ports, sorry. Already a bit tired. Um, here we have the DC in check. Here the AV out. Um, the adapter is um, included inside of the box. Here the Ethernet port, so this is also possible. HDMI output and here optical audio output. So basically that are all the connectors. So there is nothing fancy here, but it's pretty cool that you have a detachable Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, um, then let's have a look here at the bottom side. Here you can see ProBox um, model EX Plus rated at 5 volts with 2 amps. Made in China and yeah, the bottom side you see it's a little bit curved here because we have the ventilation holes in um, every corner and this is to exhaust the heat because the unit is completely fanless, makes no noise. And yeah, um, the grip here at the bottom side, so the bottom plate is also very good, so it does not really slide around on your desk. That feels really good, it's very stable, here also some ventilation holes. Um, all in all, I really like the design of the ProBox 2 EX Plus, looks like some really solid mini PC, and now I would say um, let's just hook it up to my test system and then let's talk about the performance. So now it's time to talk a little bit about the power consumption. And the power consumption is very low. The maximum wattage I could measure here was around 8 watts during the benchmark. So we're also currently doing some benchmarks here in Antutu. And in idle it's like 4, 3 watts. So very low power consumption and this is very cool. So it can do 4K with a power consumption below 10 watts. And this is just really awesome. So there we go guys, we're now here in Android 5.1 on the ProBox 2 EX Plus and this is the basic launcher, so the ProBox 2 launcher and well, um, it's actually very nice to use, so we have here the home screen on the home screen you have here some quick access buttons for movies, TV shows, music, games Kodi Media Center, Internet, File Browser or the Google Play Store For sure you also have on-screen buttons for easier navigation here for instance to take screenshots to power the TV box off here to hide the on-screen buttons which you can get back by just sliding up. The back button, home button, menu button where you can also clean the RAM just like on your Android phone. And here you can adjust the volume with um, those two buttons or basically with the remote control too. Now at the top here you will see your location and here the weather, the time, date and here that you're connected to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Alright, so you can also swipe down from the top. Then you will get like on your Android phone your notifications like screenshots, blah blah blah. Um, here you can go to the quick toggles and we have here a brightness slider. For sure this is not working and changes nothing because yeah, um, you can't change the brightness of my display with the TV box. Um, here we have Wi-Fi, so I'm connected to my home network and I have to say Wi-Fi is very good on the TV box. Also finds the network of my neighbor, dual band, my 5 GHz network, so that's pretty good. Then here we have Bluetooth, so we can test that a little bit later. Um, we'll connect to my Bluetooth speaker. And here we have location-based services, so basically that's um, your location depending on your internet connection. All right, um, here under more, you have some other categories like favorites, photos, streaming, social. You can quickly access the settings and you have here in task killer. So basically with one click you can just free up some RAM, um, for instance if you want to play a game or yeah, go to Kodi or whatever. Okay, then here we have all apps. So basically here's the menu where you can find all apps which are currently installed on the TV box. You see not too many and it comes with all the necessary stuff pre-installed. First of all, I want to check out with you the settings of the TV box. And you see we have here a very nice theme for the settings. 
And here, for instance, um, there's the Wi-Fi. And here we are connected to my home network. We'll have a look at Wi-Fi in the Android settings a bit later. Here we have the display settings, and here you can adjust the screen resolution. It's currently on full HD 60Hz because um, of my capture card, but later we'll switch to 4K 30Hz. Okay, there's also screen position, screen rotation, and daydream. So um, this is basically, um, you have here some widgets or some clock which displays. Um, it's like a screensaver and when the, the device goes to sleep. Okay, we have here um, sounds which you can adjust, the apps, you can have a look at the storage. Now, um, it actually comes with 16 gigabytes, but the total space partition is 12 gigabyte. We'll have a closer look at that in the other settings, date and time, language. You can adjust the keyboard. HDMI CC can be activated or deactivated. Um, we have here remote and accessories. The remote can also be disabled, and you can add Bluetooth accessories here. But basically, I want to go here to more settings, because here we can see the full Android settings. Also here we have Wi-Fi, so here um, the stats, very good link speed, 72 Mbits on my 2.4 GHz network, and also very good signal strength. Same goes for my 5 GHz network, not connected right now, but I can tell you it really works. And here's also the network of my neighbor, so um, the range of, wi of the Wi-Fi from the TV box is very good. Here we also have Bluetooth, and let's see if it finds... Okay, my Bluetooth speaker is actually empty, but later I will pair it. And here we have my smartwatch and my key finder, so Bluetooth is definitely working, that's what I can tell you. Okay, um, here we have display settings, so nothing special in here. You have to change the resolution outside, and here's storage. So um, 12 gigabytes, as you've seen before, actually 11.8, um, available around, I would say, 10. Um, I've installed some games, and here my SD card, so it's a 64 gigabyte SD card, FAT32 formatted, and you see it gets detected properly. So you can extend your internal memory by just using micro SD cards, but you can also attach um, USB hard drives, as you will see later in Kodi. Okay, um, then here we have apps running in the background, so let's check out the memory consumption. As you may know, the box comes with 2 gigabytes of memory, so RAM. And um, it uses around 600 megabytes, um, then you have 1 gigabyte of free memory. So actually you don't have the full 2 gigabytes usable, you have 1.6 or something like that. And um, this, the whole system here consumes like 600 and then you have still 1 gigabyte left. Okay, um, the box is also multi-language. Here you can see um, the languages. It's not the full Android language pack, so some small things are missing, but all main languages are in here. As you can see, there are really a lot, so all um, the languages you can see here on the screen are supported by the TV box. But you know, sometimes the native Android translation is not really the best. Okay, last but not least about the device. So you can see this is Android version 5.1.1 actually, so has got an alter to the latest version of Lollipop here. And we can go back, and here at the top we have system update. And yeah, I have to say, um, it always showed up to date right now. I'm not really sure when the next update is going to be released, but so far there was no update. But also this TV box is really quite new. So we'll have to wait a little bit for an update, but it runs almost bug free. Okay, that's regarding the settings. Then here we have all apps. So it supports AirDroid, so basically you can stream something from your smartphone to the TV box and show the display of your smartphone on the TV or your computer monitor. It works pretty good. It's a feature which almost every TV box has, so nothing special. An app installer pre-installed to install APK files, but the Play Store is very well um, optimized and you can download basically every application you can have on your tablet or smartphone. Alright, I've now just loaded up here some pages in the browser and I just want to show you here the browsing speed. For instance, here's CNN.com, oh wow, 170 hostages taken. Well, crazy what's going on in the world today. But well, if we refresh the page here, um, then you will see that the pictures are not sliding around now. It doesn't load up so fast because my internet connection is kind of slow. But well, as you can see, if I just um, scroll here up and down, there is no distortion in the website. It's absolutely smooth, really great experience to check out the news or whatever. BBC.com, for instance, same thing. Um, my personal website, itxtudor.com, which we're going to release soon. And also movie playback here on YouTube, for instance. If I try to play back here this movie, well, um, my buffering speed is so slow and sometimes there's a black screen and I don't know why, but um, after I refresh the page, then the video loads up. So this is kind of strange. But I have to say, um, the movie playback in the browser is really nice and kind of smooth. But um, you see, we are redirected here to mobile YouTube. And that means um, there's a yeah, resolution cap with 720p, so you don't have the best resolution. 
and um, we can go here full screen you will see it's absolutely smooth but poor resolution because it's still detected as an Android device and you have here the resolution cap of 720p okay so let's go back here that was the browser it comes also with calendar Google Chrome browser there's also a workaround for the 720p cap but well um, I don't really care and the YouTube application you also have 720p ES File Explorer is in here pre-installed with the normal File Explorer two games also pre-installed gallery Google Mail, um, all the Google applications, it comes with the Google settings, Hulu, um, Kodi. And yeah, let's have a look at Kodi first. Um, this is the latest version, it's 15.2 Isengard, pre-installed, you don't have to play around with the um, APK. I can show you here the system info, so the free memory here in Kodi is not too much, because 63% of the memory is currently used by Android. And well, um, yeah, 580 megabytes free, that's okay. We have here currently full HD resolution, but later for the test we'll switch to 4K. Here the CPU load, and you see it's Kodi 15.2. And actually full HD is absolutely smooth, you can play back um, everything, also very high bit rates. And 4K, um, I'll show you that in the tests, which we'll do after we had a look here at the menu and all the um, applications. Well, take some time to exit Kodi, not sure why, but it's a little bit slow here. Alright, so that was Kodi, um, the media test will be a little bit later. So we have here the normal media center, we have also all the Google applications pre-installed, and here the media box launcher. So basically that's a launcher you can find on a lot of other TV boxes, very easy to use. I really like it, but also the Pro Box 2 launcher, which is very customizable with different backgrounds, is also very nice to use. Okay, as you can see there is Miracast, um, 4K movie player, normal MP3 player, DMX player, well here's also Netflix. Now Netflix works, yeah for sure. But um, the resolution limit, it's like, I think, 720p or 480p because of Android. And there's a workaround for this on XDA, I think. But, well, um, the default application, which is pre-installed, will just give you a very poor resolution, as you can see, for instance, here in Family Guy. But, well, I can live with that because I usually watch Netflix on my PlayStation 4. All right, um, as you can see, also the Play Store is in here. So, um, latest version of the Google Play Store, you can download all applications. So, for instance, Antutu, other games, Candy Crush, whatever you want to, Facebook. You can install everything. It won't say unsupported um, application or TV box or whatever. So, that's really good. Okay, we have PPOE, so um, for the Ethernet settings, if you need that, um, here's some other games I've pre-installed, and here you can see that the box has root access. So really important, because for some applications, which are very useful, you just need root access, like the 6-axis control application, and yeah, um, it's pretty good that it's pre-rooted, because rooting is sometimes not so easy. It comes with system updates, so here we have Otis, and right now it's checking for an update, but it's up to date, and I have to say, um, the Android 5.1.1 Lollipop ROM, which is on the TV box, is absolutely smooth. Alright, um, this update and backup application, well, you don't need it, and last but not least, YouTube. So this is basically everything which was pre-installed, so everything you need for media playback, most important one, Kodi, it's pre-rooted and comes with the Google Play Store. So absolutely nice, and now I would say, let's do some benchmarks, then a media test, and after all this, a little bit of gaming, and then you will hear my final conclusion. Well guys, it's benchmark time, and the first benchmark finished, so the Antutu benchmark version 5.71, and it scores almost 36,000 points. So this is a very good score for the S812 if you keep in mind that it's running Lollipop. And here you can see this is like 70-75% of the performance of a Galaxy Note 4, which is very good. And here under info we can see that it's running Android 5.1.1, 32 bits. And the Mali 450MP GPU, well the resolution, we're currently running the benchmark here on Full HD resolution. And yeah, um, frequency, so it clocks up to 2 GHz. Okay, that's the Antutu benchmark. All in all, it looks very good. And now I would say, let's do a quick video test here on Antutu. So the Antutu video test also finished. We get a score of 700. Well, um, if you check this out in the ranking, for instance, um, among other TV boxes, you will see that the Mi box, which has a lower um, chipset and lower GPU, scores better. I'm really not sure why. Um, I can't tell you, but all the S812 boxes, they received that score. But honestly, I have to say, um, the video playback is very nice. So it can play back everything from 3GPs up to MKVs in 4K. Um, you will also later see a movie playback test in Kodi. As you can see, we have support for all the formats here, and the result is also normal and nothing uh, bad. Okay, that's the end of the video test, but um, just in a second, we'll do the movie test in Kodi. 
Here's a quick look at CPU-C. So here we can see the chipset, ARM Cortex-A9, so quad-core clocked at 2 GHz. It clocks from 24 up to 2 GHz, but well, I think it never reached the low clock of 24 MHz. GPU, Mali 450 MP as always, um, storage, well, um, the output resolution. And here you can see that we have root access, so the box comes pre-rooted, something I really appreciate. And um, here also um, the temperatures, and I have to say the box keeps really cool. It's now on for really a day or a little bit more, so I didn't power it off. And um, the maximum temperature here by this sensor is 60 degrees, something like that, and the box feels, yeah, not even hand warm. So really good temperatures actually. Here's the Geekbench 3 result. We get here a single core score of 532, multi core score of 1603. Well, not so impressive actually, but um, it performs really, really good. Android 5.1.1 memory, instead of the 2 gigs, you have around 1.6 gigabytes of really usable RAM. And yeah, here also some other um, yeah um, benchmarks, but honestly, you can take screenshots now if you want to, but I don't really care about those values. Oh yeah, so we're now here in Kodi 15.2 Isengard to check out the movie experience and the media performance. So here you can see it's Kodi 15.2 Isengard, CPU usage and memory consumption. So the memory usage is around 50% and we still have 850 megabytes of free memory. Okay, well, um, let's have a look at some samples. As you can see, Kodi um, here in the menu, no lag, so that's pretty good, also with a movie playing in the background. And you see it comes already with some add-ons pre-installed to watch movies, movie 4K, TO, and whatever, so pretty cool. We can go here to files, and here on my USB drive, first of all, I would say let's get started here with this high bitrate full HD movie. So, Jellyfish, 120 um, Mbits. And just check this out. So um, keeps the bitrate um, over 100 Mbits. Um, doesn't skip too many frames. Just some, yeah. And this is um, looks very good. If you have a look here at the movie itself, um, you really feel that it's smooth and the playback looks good. Okay. Um, then let's have a look at some other movies. And there we go. So files. And I have here one Cheetah trailer, full HD resolution, 60 FPS. Unfortunately, well, it's now on 4K output with 30 Hz only. But I have to say I've tested those full HD um, movies um, also on full HD resolution with 60 FPS and it's very it's very smooth and if you check out the playback this is absolutely awesome but just um, drops here all the frames because of the 30 Hertz I guess okay um, let's go back and let's have a look for instance at some um, H.264 movies so here the 4k trailer of The Hobbit and there we go, so um, it has an H.264 decoder built in in the system and if you check this out then um, it's also quite smooth so the movie experience on 4K H.264 um, is very very nice and there you go so check this out. You still feel that it's not 100% smooth and it will also start to skip some frames, but yeah, um, I have to say it's watchable and I would enjoy a movie here. Maybe in some faster scenes, it doesn't look absolutely smooth, but I have to say it looks good. Um, let's go back here. Let's try some H.265 movie, which um, is probably a little bit slower, if I can say it like that, than H.264, but let's check this out. And there we go, so Tears of Steel, um, you see that there is some more, I would say, lag. Um, you also see that we'll start to skip way more frames than H.264. We just have to wait a little bit, probably. But um, you still can see that it's watchable. So it's not like it doesn't play back it at all, or it looks absolutely bad, or lags too much, but... Um, yeah, it could be a little bit smoother in my opinion, but the playback works and I'm happy with that. So, nice experience actually also here on H.265, like here, Tears of Steel. Okay, um, then what didn't work was actually um, VP9 for instance. This was absolutely unplayable here. Um, can try to skip a little bit forward, but yeah, you will see that the CPU usage here also then goes up to 100% on all the cores, and yeah, it can't really play back that in 4K. And um, the next thing I had to check out was high temp at full HD resolution, which we have right over here. And yeah, in other um, players, I couldn't even get a picture. In Kodi, I could at least get picture and sound, but um, I have to say, um, 
the picture is totally distorted. I mean, the playback is is very smooth, but just check this out. What the hell is that? So I'm not really sure what's going on there with the codec, but somehow it, it can't really play back that. Um, also, I'm not really on video. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have so much clue about that, so I'm not really sure what is causing the issue, but I have to say, um, just from my experience, it can't play back that. All right, so the H.264 performance is very nice. H.265, a little bit more laggy, but still watchable. And yeah, um, really nice movie performance actually here in Kodi on the Probox 2EX+. Here's a quick look at the Remote Plus control, and I have to say um, it's absolutely worth it. So this is really my favorite remote control when it comes down to controlling your TV box. And this is because it has a built-in gyroscope, um, also built-in microphone, and you can use it as a gamepad. So um, here's the D-pad function, for instance. You can also use here the buttons. You can put um, the TV box to sleep by just um, pressing here the button. You can also um, wake it up, but when it's completely off, you have to use the button on the TV box. Then here's the gyroscope function. So you press here the mouse button, and then you get a cursor. And as you can see, I can control here the cursor. I can open up the browser. And for browsing web pages, this is very useful because you can just scroll here up and down like this. And this is um, a really cool thing and makes the life really easier. If you would have to do that with the normal remote control, um, then this is really not cool. Okay, um, the remote control itself, it doesn't use a lot of batteries and I have to say um, the overall um, experience with that remote control is really good. So if you can get it right now, then get it. It's super awesome and universal. That means you could also use it on your computer if you want to. Now yeah, also the gaming performance is quite good in full HD resolution, so I can show you here for instance Real Racing 3, we're playing here with a PlayStation 4 controller connected with yeah, a micro USB cable, and well as you can see this looks very very good, so absolutely smooth experience here on my 4K monitor, but well um, we're playing here in full HD resolution, and yeah, um, great detail, so if you check out here the rear mirror, then you can also see um, everything here, the cars, yeah, and um, also here, you see it's totally smooth, even though there are many cars at the start, and this is not even smooth on some um, smartphones I have. But here on the TV box, absolutely nice gaming experience. And this is really a lot of fun to play it with the PlayStation 4 controller. Okay, so that regarding racing games, but I can also show you, for instance, a quick round of Modern Combat 4. Okay guys, now here's also a quick test of Modern Combat 5, not 4, sorry, here with the PlayStation 4 controller. And well, um, what you have to do is just rebind all the buttons, because by default, for instance, all the buttons are mixed. So the native controller support for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 controllers is really good, but for PlayStation 4 it doesn't really work, also here on 5.1.1. Okay, so let's jump down here. Um, you will see that the overall performance is okay. It's a little bit laggy though, but it's playable, and there we go. Just all the buttons are fucked up, so I have to shoot here with the options button, which is not that good. And just regarding the performance, you see um, sometimes it lags, although it lags a little bit harder here, like if there are many enemies, and if the viewing distance is very high. Um, yeah, um, the overall performance is okay, so this shooter is playable for instance, but not really the best performance. But I have to say, it's okay, and um, it has really good graphics, so probably 90% of the games which you can find on the Play Store will run absolutely fine, but you see more Combat has some sometimes really um, huge FPS drops or some stuttering or it freezes just for like a second as you have seen before. Okay guys, that's the gaming performance here on the Droidbox 2 EX Plus. Oh yeah, so we're now here at the end of this review of the Probox 2X Plus. I think it's a great updated device. So the old Probox 2X was also nice, but this one here runs Android 5.1.1, and this is the best lollipop experience I've had on a TV box ever. So way better than the Transmod ones, even with the updated firmware, and Probox is also a nice company, so you will see firmware updates, OTAs, but also you can update the Probox 2X um, over USB by using the OTG port just connected to the computer and it works. So really cool actually. Also I liked the um, great Wi-Fi performance, gigabit Ethernet, so um, home streaming um, in your home network, not a problem at all. Also screen mirroring was really smooth. The 4K and Full HD performance is very nice, and yeah, 4K average for the S812, but Full HD very, very good. Um, yeah, it comes pre-rooted. This is something which makes life way easier. The design, well, um, it could have more USB ports, maybe also USB 3.0, um, but yeah, you could use an um, OTG adapter with the OTG port, then you have three USB ports actually. So well, um, regarding the cons, not really much actually. So the TV box is really great, but the internal video recorder didn't work. Actually, this should work on Lollipop. 
And yeah, as I've said with the USB ports, um, it could have more USB ports because mouse and keyboard and then you want another one for your USB drive probably, so you have to use the OTG port. And well, um, that's basically it. Um, the rest is very nice, keeps cool and also the performance as you've seen really great. So I can definitely recommend it. Um, link is down below in the description, but don't forget to also get the Remote Plus if possible because um, the Remote Plus makes life way easier to control the TV box from your couch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this review again. See you soon in the next one. Have a nice day, stay fresh and bye-bye.